Let's discuss one of my favorite parts of the new Kong drum designer, the synth modules. Kong helps you easily create tweakable synthesized drum sounds. Sure, making synth drum sounds is nothing new in reason. Thor makes great sounding synth drums. But let's have a race, shall we? Let's make a snare drum and Kong on the right side of the screen and a snare drum and Thor on the left side of the screen. Okay. Show programmer. Create analog oscillator. Set waveform to triangle. Adjust my mod envelope like so. Create a noise oscillator. Set up my low pass filter frequency to 79 hertz and up the drive of it. Envelope goes to the right. Envelope goes to the right. And done. So how'd I do? Hmm. Okay. Show drums and effects. Make snare. Done. Double rainbow. So you see. Kong isn't just about great sounds, it's about fast sounds. Let's take a look at each synth drum type in Kong. We'll start creating a bass drum by selecting a pad, clicking Show Drum and Effects, and choosing Synth Bass Drum from the list of available modules. The basic settings are in place from the first second you create a kick module, but you can tweak the sound to your liking. Pitch controls the fundamental pitch of the drum, and Bend Amount helps shape the contour of your sound, from flat glitch kicks to bouncy house kicks. If you feel your bass drum needs more click in its attack, there's a click section for you to fine tune the center frequency of the click, its resonance, and the level mixed into your sound. The tone and noise knobs get your sound nice and dirty. Tone is just like a tone knob on a guitar. It darkens the sound. And noise is, well, noise. Between the two, you can darken and noise up your synthesizer kicks until you sound like Duran Duran as a garage band. You know, if that's like your thing. The beauty of Kong is that each drum is set up with just the controls you need to shape your sound. The module for the snare drum gives you simple controls for the snare tone harmonics and rattle noise. You'll recognize some similarities from the bass drum module, the pitch and decay. Short decay gives a marching drum sound and long decays sound like a sloppy synth snare. Looking at the tom modules, things are starting to look pretty familiar. We've got our pitch, decay, bend amount, and noise. The bend amount gives us instant laser toms. But what makes the tom modules unique is their reaction to velocity. The pitch change is based on incoming hit velocity, which makes these kinds of rolls so inviting. I can turn the noise mix knob all the way up for a tom sound that is entirely noise. But when I say entirely noise, that doesn't mean useless noise. You could set the decay to medium long, the tone to zero, and create something more akin to a detuned floor tom from an acoustic drum set. Or add a little tone generator into the signal and you've got the synth equivalent of an orchestral timpani. Once you start thinking about drum sound design in this way, you'll suddenly realize that you can use Kong to make way more than just traditional snares, toms, and kicks with these settings. On the top row of my pads, I've used some of the effects available in Kong, along with creative knob settings on the synth modules, to create the following. A clave sound. A vibra slap. A china-type crash cymbal. And an 808-style rim shot. When you put these all together to make a beat, you can get some great analog sounds that are all your own. Like this. Just one thing missing though. This beat has no hi-hats. I've saved the hi-hats for the last part of the discussion because even though it's one module, the hi-hats are kind of like four sounds in one. You'll see the same synth knobs that are pretty much standard across all of Kong's synth modules. Pitch, decay, click, tone, and level. All that leaves is ring which makes a sound exactly as its name suggests. Listen as I turn up the ring from minimum to maximum. You don't hear anything different, do you? No, me neither. This is why we save the hi-hats for last. The hi-hats make use of something called hit types in Kong. When you load a hi-hat module, you can set your pad to mimic different ways of playing a hi-hat for a closed, semi-closed, semi-open, or open hit type. So the ring knob isn't necessarily audible on the closed hi-hat sound. But if I change the hit type to open, suddenly that ring knob does a whole lot more. In a previous tutorial, I showed you the pad settings section of Kong, 
and said that you can use it to make more complex pad assignments. Well, sharpen your pencils and take some notes, because I'm about to show you something you'll use a lot. I'll create a hi-hat sound on pad number 5. If I wanted to create an open hi-hat, I could create another hi-hat module on pad 6 and set its hit type to open like this. But now I've created a management situation for myself. For example, what if I'm mixing my track and I realize that the tone of my hi-hat needs to go up in order to cut through the mix correctly? If I adjust the one drum sound, I need to adjust the other one the same way. If I forget, it'll sound weird. That kind of management complexity becomes much more annoying when you set up, for example, four drums for all four hit types. Thankfully, that's not how we do things in Kong. I set up my hi-hat on pad 5. Then I click the Drum Assignment button on the Pad Settings section to open the assignment grid. I can set Pad 6 to trigger the same hi-hat module that's on Pad 5. I can do likewise for Pads 7 and 8. So now I have four pads all triggering the same drum module sound. Right now, you can hear that it sounds identical across all four pads. But if I select each pad and choose a different hit type, I have four different sounds coming from one module. This means any changes I make to the hi-hat module's sound, tone for instance, is reflected in each hit type without me having to think about it. So, we'll leave it there. I'll play you out with the beat I made. I've added the hi-hats, and you can see what a wonderful thing it is to have that kind of hi-hat variation at your fingertips, literally. The sounds you can make with Kong synth modules are pretty much limited only by your imagination. And the great thing about Kong is that you can focus on that imagination and not on signal modulation. It's starting to even look like a triple rainbow. <laughs>